Check, check. Pretty good. Good to go. Okay, 43, we have a 05. Male got into a car, hit a female, and took off on foot. Oh, two, we're just coming into the area. Is there a description of this male? He is a white male, early 20s. There he is. Bang him on the door. It appears that this male is trying to get into that house. In September 2016, 60 camera crews across the nation captured 48 hours with the men and women who keep Canada safe. These are their stories. There's danger every day. Take a look at your weather forecast for the weekend. Nice and clear, good. Inbound medevac response required. It's looking okay. There might be a chance of a thunderstorm here in the next couple hours, but we're good. A little so, yeah. bumpy, but windy. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna get changed. Okay. Constable Dan Kim is a 13-year veteran of the Calgary Police Service. Pilot Cam Bushard cut his teeth fighting fires, flying in some of Canada's toughest conditions. Cam is a guy's guy. He has a natural drive to want to go find offenders. I'm coming into this role knowing what it's like to go after criminals. Check, check. They are the Hawks Air Support Unit. Good to go. Good to go. Clear. Hawks was formed in 1995 after police constable Rick Sonnenberg was tragically killed during a high-speed chase. If a police vehicle doesn't have to be pursuing a vehicle and a helicopter can watch it, it definitely is safer for everybody. One police helicopter from an aerial view can cover approximately the same amount of ground that 10 to 12 police cars can cover. The EC-120 helicopter is loaded with custom surveillance equipment, like the thermal imaging camera that can zoom into vehicles seven kilometers away. This is a list of all the stolen cars in the past 48 hours, 37 stolen cars. Cam is very good with vehicle recognition. Is that a beaver? Yeah. I'm looking at a 1080p high definition camera, and he's looking out the window 2020 from 5,000 feet up. Wait, that's a Patriot, isn't it? Yeah. On a busy night, we might have anywhere from 16 to 20 calls. We tend to get a little bit busier as the night goes on. It's early. How's it going? Good, good. Hello? I'm on a first name basis with most people. It's Louie, not Chief Sutherland. $7, As police chief of Kensington, Prince Edward Island, Louis Sutherland has his own unique style. Is that a winner? If you're going to share with me. Sure, I'll share. See ya. Take care. I try to be approachable all the time. I don't wear a hat. Most police officers are supposed to wear hats. Hats uh, are a barrier, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Kensington has about 1,550 people living in the community. In a town this small, any fatality gets very personal. The local girl was killed in a car accident. The community was rocked when this happened. You know, it's sad I get choked up about it because uh, she was a darling kid, you know, she just was. I go visit her grave every morning. It's part of my day. I stop for a second and look at her and have a little smile to myself, and uh, onward I go. Determined to do his part to make Kensington's road safer, Louis is joining other law enforcement agencies in a highway safety checkpoint on Route 2. Hey, sir, how are you today? We're looking for people that shouldn't be out on the highway. We're looking for impaired drivers, uh, people with no licenses, suspended licenses. You're good. Okay, Have a good you. weekend. Take care. 
Okay, 99.9% .9 of the people come through here don't have anything to fear. Your license is expired. Pull the truck over, please, to the side of the road. Expired On your birthday. You can't drive the vehicle. I'm not letting you drive away with no license. I'm sorry. Ten four negative. The trailer's registered, but the actual trailer doesn't have an inspection for it. So we're gonna throw some scales underneath the trailer to make sure it matches the weight. Okay, just pull your truck ahead, please. Oh, P50. Yep. Okay, anything over 449 has to be inspected. Right now, empty, it weighs 850 kilograms. He's usually getting a ticket today for not having a proper inspection on the vehicle. Well, some people may think that we're over-policing the town. I don't. I'd like to think that we're in the safest community there is in PEI. We're here to keep things safe. Red five. Just up on your foot here. Good. All right, so we're looking for Christine Wood again tonight. We're going to be papering an area. Um, we're also looking for Tiffany Miles. Yeah. She's from Steinbeck, but she's missing here in Winnipeg. Everybody's got. In recent decades, hundreds of First Nations women have been reported missing in Canada. In Winnipeg's North End, the search is on for two of them. So we make sure we have flashlights, sharps containers, four of them at least. We've got four groups tonight. Okay, let's hit our streets. Hi. This is the Bear Clan, a community-based patrol trying to bring safety to one of Canada's most embattled neighborhoods. When I moved in here, I, I discovered, you know, I've got a John across the street from my house. I've got a cracked little lips next door. The prostitution that happens in the North End happens at the corner of my street. So it was like I could sit back and watch or, or get off my ass and do something about it, and I decided to, to do something. James Favel has been leading the volunteers for the past two years. The Bear Clan is a healing and a protective society, right? They protect the community, they provide for the community, they give voice to the voiceless. Hi, I'm James. A passing motorist has a lead on one of the missing women. What's going on? I, I heard somebody talking about the missing girl. Christine Wood? Yeah. And she's at a house on Powers. In her basement, I believe. Holding her That's in the basement. So if you hear anything else, please. No. Okay. Good idea. Take care, thank you. Thank you. It's rumored that she's being held in the basement there. James gives the information to police. And there's like a development there. The cops have now sent guys into the area, then they're gonna go look. A thousand feet above Calgary, hawks zero in on a possible break and enter guided by high-tech cameras integrated to GPS. We got eyes on that school now. Where did you say the hits were coming from? The main entrance. There's a yellow, like a cute band type truck parked out front of the school. I think the school might still be under construction. There's a blue construction fence all around it. There's a, I think it's a Toyota Highlander SUV pulling in it. Battle of security. Yeah. A local security patrol arrives to investigate. Did you still want to stick around? I've got a unit coming out there, mate. They should be able to check it out. Thanks for your help. Talk to the Alpha 4 for a unit contact. There's the possibility that on Alpha 2 they may have spotted the 1086 vehicle. Okay, we'll go to Alpha 2. That's it. Good, good, good. Quick, quick, quick. Is there a unit on scene southbound Dundas Station? Hey, buddy. What are you doing? Constable George Horan is a mounted officer with the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary. Canada's oldest police service. I love police work, I've loved it from day one. The best job here is right here at the Mounted Jonas. 
Hey, Jenny. Playing softball last night? No, got caught up on some Netflix from vacation. Constable Jennifer Clark has been George's partner for the past year. I mean, his heart and soul is in this barn. Be good. Yeah, stand. Stand. They're not a dumb animal, I can assure you of that. There's a different side of policing on horseback. Accessibility to places where police cars cannot go. Ground searching for missing persons, they're ideal. The constabulary's Percheron draft horses can weigh up to 1,200 kilos. And he don't even know I'm in his name. Percherons were originally bred in France as war horses. They had the endurance to walk, you know, miles and miles and miles, and they still have the energy to fight in battle. Good fella, he's a good boy. George and Jenny are prepping a new member of the team for his first downtown patrol. Dr. Rich is laid back, he wants to work, very intelligent. You show him a couple of times and he catches on right away. Good boy. This is maiden voyage for down on George Street. Tonight we expect there will be uh, quite a few people down there. and All those university students are going to be looking to get out and celebrate. The Percherons are perfect for controlling the notoriously rowdy crowds on George Street. I could drive by in a car and they won't move out of my way. I walk down with a horse and Puff is like the bird into the Red Sea. Some people get ready and they go out looking for girls. Some people get out ready looking for a fight. So it's quarter after seven. So we're gonna do Arlington, then cut back because we wanna get back to that Salter Bridge. Okay, let's make our way. After a lead on one of the two missing women turned up nothing, Bear Clan volunteers continue their search on the streets of North Winnipeg. Well, the whole reason why I started Bear Clan again was to interrupt those systems that see our people hospitalized and jailed and, and taken into sex trade and you know caught up in the drug world. We're making some real great strides. We're finding bags. This is meth. We found 10 bags uh, right here about five weeks ago. Sharps container. There's a trafficker here somewhere. Right around here. Where's Selkirk? Selkirk? Yeah, just getting there. Yeah, I saw it just as I was saying it. Used for crack pipe. Sold at our corner store. Sold them at the corner store. We're out asking people that we come across um, if they're familiar, first of all, with Christine Wood and the fact that she's missing. And I believe now it's been three weeks and one day. Do you have a de description on this? Another missing 12 year old? Yes, uh, we're getting it right now. Okay, thanks. We had a woman roll up and tell us that her 12-year-old daughter's missing. So she gave us the information and we got pictures. And... As night descends, James Favel and the clan search an underpass frequented by transients in hopes of finding the missing 12-year-old. Up top. All right, so there's a syringe back there. Sharps container. We just want to know that she's still safe. The following events took place across Canada over 48 hours in September 2016. We've had two more reports of missing women, a 12-year-old girl and a 17-year-old girl uh, gone missing again tonight, so we're looking for now four men. The Bear Clan Patrol is trying to make a troubled neighborhood safer for all, including sex trade workers. We're just here to see your safety. Also, we're looking for uh, Christine Wood. Have you heard about that? No, I don't know who there is, but I'll sit around. OK, please. Yeah. When we first started coming out here, they were afraid of us. They'd run away from us. They didn't want to talk to us. Now they come to us when they have these kinds of issues. So if you hear anything, you know how to get a hold of Facebook. OK, let's hustle. When night falls, traffic picks up on the north end streets of Winnipeg. A busy night tonight. There's not one business here is open. This is the sex tourism that we get over here. This one? Yeah, it's one of these trucks. Your light? Get the plate. We had a street involved woman come over and, and say that uh, she was scared. There was some guy just sitting there watching her, you know? Yeah, he was sketchy. I told him that the police had been called and they were on their way. They're going to check you if you're still here. So we got the hell out of here. We took his license plate, that way if he comes back and harasses her, she has my phone number, she can call me and tell me that, and I'll put it forward to the police. See, that's part of it, right? Yeah. We're, we're taking, we're taking that, that information down and keeping it so that if something does happen, 
We, we got a sketchy character. It was a good night, folks. Nobody got hit. The volunteers return to their home base at the Indinaway Youth Center, where there's news. There's surveillance all around, and we looked at the cameras. Let's try this one here. So we got some images. The Youth Center security cameras have captured the missing 12-year-old with a group of girls outside. This is the 12-year-old? Yeah. And they've got her? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Just take some people to stand up and, and get off the couch, get out of your comfort zone, get in the streets and do something. And that's that's all it takes. And very helpful tonight. Hope you come back. Thank you. I'd love to come back. Evil only survives because good people, you know, don't act. I'm going to help you, man. Just be patient. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. We go down Queen Street and then down George. Perfect. In St. John's, the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary's mounted unit heads for notorious George Street, where bars and restaurants are packed with university students back from summer vacation. We can do a lot of things that people on foot can't do. Because we're so far up, you'll be able to see the whole street. And that gives people a sense of safety because they know there's a police presence there. But it also lets people know that we're not messing around. Guys, move! Out of the way! Rounding out the unit tonight is Constable Chad Rogers, who rides the constabulary's newest recruit, Dr. Rich. I'm really impressed with him. Now, give me an hour, he might be different, but so far, so good. <laughs> Dr. Rich is doing really well. For his first time down, really well. How's it going? A regular patrol, we go down and we pace the street first, make sure that people saw that we're on the road. Hey, my son. Hey, what up, yeah. baby? When I worked on patrol and I pull up in a police car, nobody wants to talk to me. But when I stroll up the street on my horse, everyone wants to talk to me. Just try not to crowd them too much. Just take a little step back. They're very, very effective in crowd control. One horse will take the place of 10 police officers on the ground. Knock it off. Hey. Knock it off or two of you are going to be down the lockup. I don't care if your buddies or not. They were arguing a little ways up the road and we kept on walking. While we were walking, we could see him coming down. So we kept him in sight. All Chad done was went in and cut in between them. Told the boys uh, to move on or they're going to be charged with causing disturbance. And as you can see, they pitter pattered. You won't see them no more tonight. You come here for the love of the animals and the love of the job in all honesty. Fifteen four one dispatch BMW and it's coming out of the area. On approach and angling for southbound Sixty Eighth Street. In Calgary, Dan Kim and Cam Bushard are dispatched to the northeast sector. Police have spotted a vehicle similar to one used in a break and enter. I'm just gonna go for a T stop and just eliminate this vehicle. Yeah, how two are with you? And T stop's been initiated. Okay, I'm just gonna get the light on. Okay. Hawk's 30 million candle watt night sun throws an intense beam of light on officers working a thousand feet below. It can light up a backyard to a city block. Team 4-1, this vehicle's uh, gonna be negative. It's not the car they're looking for. K943, we have a 1005. But they're soon deployed again. A uh, male got into a Cars hit a female and took off on foot westbound. 10-4, coming from Porter Street. 10-4. Dan and Cam must now locate the suspect, who's on the run. Talk to you, we're just coming into the area. Now it appears that this male is trying to get to a house. Is there a description of this male? He is a white male, early 20s, red hair, long red beard. There he is. We got a male at the back when oh, he's banging on the door. Kind of a bi level house, top deck. They must hold sight of the suspect until ground units arrive. Male got into a car, hit a female, and took off on foot. High above a Calgary suburb, 
Hawks air support assists ground units pursuing an assault suspect. Their infrared camera reveals the man is trying to force his way into a house. He's kicking the door in the back of this house and uh, gonna be making his way down the stairs into the backyard, actually falling. The EC-120 helicopter was chosen for its low noise output, so the suspect has no idea he's being tracked by hawks 1,000 feet above. Making his way northbound towards the front. Hold on, copy, hold on. Let's make sure we have these four members before we approach. Yeah, I'm just gonna be crossing northbound across the street. Mark unit just rolling up now. We got a uh, unit out and two members just challenging the male. This combination of thermal camera, GPS, and aerial support provides ground units with the information they need to apprehend the suspect quickly. At the end of the day, that's why we're there, to offer the aerial support to the ground patrol units. Perfect. Thanks very much for your help. That was awful. Yeah, you bet. Uh, dispatch will be 10 